kind of burn snow. See if I can get it to go black before it melts. What are you, are you doing? Cold? Fire? Having a campfire? Are you cold? <laughs> oh, kind of burn snow. <laughs> Why are you wasting precious time and energy on burning snow? <laughs> I need to cook my ramen. Watch this. Push it into the drain. Ooh, it's flammable snow. Yeah, well, gas that's on snow becomes flammable. That's just science. My torch ain't being very torchy. Yeah, it's out of, turn it up. It's out. So it's dumping gas instead of fume. Kids, don't burn your snow at home. Don't burn anything at home. <laughs> All right, welcome back to another day in the body shop. So I'd like to take a second and thank today's sponsor of this video, Private Auto. So thank you for sponsoring this. I'm more about Private Auto a little bit later, but today I'm gonna be showing you guys exactly how to fix cab corners that were smashed by a bed hitting into them. So we've got an eyebrow here. We've got a hard ridge there. We've got that smashed. We're gonna be using our dent fix dent puller. You guys like that because our one short got over a million views. It's the highest viewed video we have. Pulling a dent, who would have thunk? I'm gonna leave all my protective coverings on so that we don't get any dust or any dirt or anything like that inside the truck. But I've got this dent here to fix and then we've got the other cab corner over here. So let me show you that real quick. All right, so then we got this little dent right here. So this is actually how it's supposed to be right there. But you can see right there, that's not supposed to be there. That's right where the bed went boink and bumped into the back of it. So we're gonna be taking you guys through the process, showing you every single step all the way through to primer. We'll go round up some tools and we'll get to working on it. We've got Hillbilly in the other room working on the bed. He's got a lot of snow and I saw him walking through the shop with a little butane torch. So I'm sure he's gonna be trying to melt it or do something. Him in flames. <sighs> so I'm gonna have Colton uh, kind of tilt up on the front a little bit to see if we can get the water to run all at once instead of just drip, drip, drip. Why is there water in here? Because there was snow in there. It was outside and it snowed and filled the bed full of snow. It's just my new spot. I'm just sort of hanging out right here. Good? Yeah. Okay, I like to take these tunnel covers apart, which is two screws, and then this leg comes off, two screws, and then that one comes off. And it's easier just to maneuver around. It's not so flimsy. And just all around easier. See? Uh oh, maybe this one don't do it. Bitch, it's locked in there. Never mind, it won't do it. It so. will. It'll come off and then this slides that way. We gotta lift the whole thing up. So we'll just leave these in and we'll just struggle for a second and get it pulled out. But that will be when Robbie is gonna be here to help because it's gonna take two of us to move it. So for now, I'm gonna start popping the wiring and the plug and everything off this side of the bed because we're replacing this whole structure. So you push down, pops, and then you just grab your crow's foot. The Christmas tree clips out of uh, their holes. Bam, there's one. We gotta get that. That's out. Then we gotta get these bed lights out. Pop the light out. Bam. Bam. Boom. And then I gotta pull the tailgate latch or striker and then the tailgate hinge. And then this side will be gutted to where we could start grinding spot welds. Okay, so I do the majority of the filming when stuff like this is going on, but it's hard for me just to stand back and watch. So I grab the crow's foot. There's this little, looks like a trim piece on the front of this bed. I'm gonna take those off. So Colton and Hillbilly already put a new axle assembly in this. So this is the truck that we told you guys about. All Snake took forever to approve it. And then we've had parts on back order for well over a month. So unfortunately that's how it goes, but we're getting back to work on it. We're getting this thing body work. So while Hillbilly was moving out cars to bring in the truck bed for the truck that we're working on, I saw the saddest thing. Let me show you guys. Look at this. The poor Lamo. It's out here. Snow getting dripped. I mean, ice, water getting dripped on it. Snow everywhere. 
So do you guys think this is gonna um, run and drive when we try and pull it in to get it all dried off? And winter, I don't even know, like winterized, wrapped up? I'm, I'm having my doubts. What do you think? So while coming in here to film Hillbilly, I noticed that there is not a lot of space. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the bed. Well, he's gonna bring the bed in there and then there will be lots more space, hopefully, for him to work on the truck bed. All right, so Colton's gonna run and grab me some safety glasses because we wanna take this serious. So first step, safety glasses. So we're gonna grind right out the center of our dent. I don't wanna get crazy. So I'm gonna go right here. So the reason for that is we're gonna put our key tabs right there. Now, one other thing that I've gotta do. I like how a Colton went to get your safety glasses and you're not wearing them. I put my safety squints on. <laughs> so I've gotta grind a spot for my ground. So that's strictly just gonna be my grounding strap. Now, did you get yourself some? Seriously? Seriously? Oh, you're kidding me. I don't think I ground that down far enough. Okay, that should hold. Now what we've got to do is put all these keys. Just like that. So I'm gonna line up a bunch of keys so we can pull this dent out. And you might remember, we've used this tool before. I've already said it, super cool tool. Well, hi there. Get ready to go in the paint shop. In the paint shop? Why? Oh. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I just gotta hurry and get these pulled out and this pulled out and just put it on the cart and then I'll go into there where there's more room. And now I'm ready to pull. I'm gonna give you a pennant. Okay? Right there. Walk it. Break. This is gonna be a this is gonna be a snappy little edit installing these. We're nearing the end of my key installation. What I'm gonna do is I have a bridge puller over here, and we'll put a rod in here, and we'll actually use the bridge puller to bring this out. But right here we have an eyebrow. So let me get this out of my way. Just want to give myself some room to work. Alright, so here we have a rod, and you can see the rod only attaches to the lowest point. So as you're pulling, it'll start pulling tabs around it. So that's the whole point of this key pull system. You're not pulling all of that at once. You're putting pressure in the center, you're pulling the lowest spot, and as it comes out, it pulls the rest of the keys. As we put pressure, I'm gonna be able to tap this eyebrow out of it. And you're gonna be absolutely in awe at what this will do. All right, so now that we're applying pressure on this bridge puller, I can actually see the metal starting to move. So what I'll do is I'm gonna have Colton just kind of pull some pressure right here. See, that just started coming out. So now we're pushing pressure towards Colton, just twisting, twisting, and I don't wanna to go too far because I'm gonna use the body hammer. So now that Colton's pulling pressure, just watch what happens. I'm just releasing some pressure, real light. I'm just kind of bouncing it because I just want the weight of the hammerhead. I need to move this up a little bit so that I can get that eyebrow. So we're going to reevaluate the situation and move the bridge puller, not the bridge puller itself, so hold it right there. All I'm doing is moving sliding that head. Up. Yep. So very carefully, we're going to go right up in here. And get it all tight like. Now this is Colton's very, 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 very first time. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make this a vlog style video where he can go back and ask questions to the video instead of me. Now I realize that we're putting a lot of work into this truck, but if the owner was getting ready to sell it, to get exactly what this truck is worth, his only option is to sell it to another enthusiast just like you. And that's why Private Auto, the sponsor of today's video, exists. 
Over 16 million people buy and sell vehicles privately each year, figuring it out on their own. Now with Private Auto, you can verify identities to avoid being scammed. Now if you've been on Facebook Marketplace, you realize most every single thing on there is a scam. If you try to sell something, you're gonna get 100 messages of, of bots. Private Auto will verify identities so you can avoid those types of scams. Trying to sell something doesn't have to be difficult. So you can e-sign the bill of sale right in the app. Private Auto is the first transactional marketplace backed by proprietary banking technology to make the private sell safe, simple, and secure. All right, so you might ask, how is Private Auto any different than other listing sites? Traditional listing sites only advertise the vehicle. The sellers are left to filter unverified inquiries and fumble through the actual sale of their own vehicle. Private Auto is a self-service, end-to-end solution. You're able to easily link your Private Auto account to various listing sites to manage multiple offers in one place. Now I know what you're thinking, this truck's a mess but we have a lot of stuff to get done so that our customer can sell this truck as soon as we're finished. Now, I'm gonna highly recommend that you use privateauto.com to sell this truck because it just makes sense. Head over to privateauto.com, use code Robbie, get your first listing for free, and get your vehicle sold. All right, so thank you, Private Auto, for sponsoring today's video. Make sure you guys click that link in the description, use code Robbie to get yourself a free ad listing. That eyebrow's virtually gone. So another thing is I'm over pulling just slightly and then I can tap it back in. I wanted the over pull so I can get this eyebrow out. This is what I'm most concerned about. No more eyebrow. So that's gonna be, it's gonna be good. We're gonna release this and move on to the next spot. So Colton's gonna take that out of here. What I wanna do though is because I'm done, Done with my eyebrow removal process, which I'm not gonna lie, that's pretty dang sweet. Eyebrow be gone. So I'm gonna remove my keys. Twisty, twisty, twisty. Dink, dink, tink, tink, tonk. Then I'll do a little bit of grinding, some fine tuning, and that section will be done. It's like oh, magic, it's dude. Magic, you know, wow. Okay, now we've got to set up the bridge puller here. So I'm gonna put a foot somehow here and then across the back. Okay, I looked at the, a new panel and I have to grind these six spot welds back here, a whole bunch underneath, and then a whole bunch under this bed liner that I'll get removed when I get to that spot. I'm gonna work on top or this piece, the bottom, and there's a bunch across, uh, along the front that I have to remove too. I got these spot welds grind, and I want to take my seam buster and tap it in to make sure that I got it all the way through the panel and not into the this panel. And it looks like I have to go a little bit more on a couple of these, so I'll get doing that. So there's a couple of spot welds back here, and I can't really get to them because this is bent up out of the way or into the way. So I'm going to bend it back out of the way. Now I should be able to get them. All grounded up. So what I'm gonna do now is just come through and fine tune all my metal work. So right now, I'm sort of over pulling it. I'm adding some heat to it. And then I will go through, grind it, and tap it. Whoa! Ooh. Shoot. Burned a hole. Now we gotta weld that. I don't know why, but it burned a hole. So I've got to weld that, but Colton's gonna go grab me the, the welder and a welding blanket, and we're gonna get this thing all ready to weld it up. <laughs> Feeling pretty good. I like it. Picasso, I like it. Okay, I like it, Picasso. I'm gonna use my best practice. That one is so little. So we'll go ahead and we'll grab the stud machine, we'll get it over here and we'll get this one pulled while we're waiting on the welding. Oh, order up. I know I'm going to need to go right through here. Oh wow, look at that. Did you see that? Watch this flex. We got some serious flex going on here. All right, we got that all pulled. I'm gonna get it all ground. This one's gonna be simple. It pulled right out. That is superb. I don't even, I don't even know that I need to 
do anything to that. That feels great. So our next step, we're gonna go back, get that welded, but over here on this side, this side will be able to sand it out with my DA and start my filler work. So this one's metal work is done on this side. Back to the other side. All right, here goes nothing. All right, so I got my little micro hole filled in. It's all welded. Not too bad, had the gas tank covered. So one thing I'm gonna do before I put my welder away, I am going to grind this. And I'm gonna make sure that we don't need the welder again because it's just my luck that every single time, every single time I get done welding and I go and grind it, then I need the welder as soon as I put it away. All right, today was successful. So I didn't grind through the metal, got it all welded perfectly. So Colton's gonna go grab my DA and Hillbilly's gonna make a lot of noise so you guys hear him pounding in the background. And then we're gonna get this all sanded up and get our first spread of pipe. Now I'm just making sure the welds are grinded all the way through with the steam button. Okay, so Robbie stole the air hose for a minute so he could DA and I need the air hose. Here. You're welcome to use it. I want to just chisel the... I don't need, I have, uh, other I have other stuff to do. You don't have an excuse anymore. Well, it gives me an excuse to get rid of this rhino lining. Yeah, so, yeah. I'm gonna hurry and chip away this rhino lining because there's spot welds right here I need to get and spot welds all along right here I need to get. Just, um, what I would do, put a line and cut it with a razor blade and then you can pull up the rhino lining. Then they have a seam to go to. And that's gonna be my line right there. So what I'm going for is I'm getting rid of every one of my grinder marks. So I'm just sanding away. You can see here it's feathered out right there. There's grinder marks. Getting rid of this so I have a lip to go underneath to start filling it up. Jeez, this stuff doesn't just come up. Up, sure. There we go. Now we're starting to get somewhere. I'm just hand sanding on the edge. We're gonna have to do a little bit of filler work down in here where we can't get it perfect. So we've just about got everything peeled back. Like I was saying, it's just like an onion. You wanna peel back the layers and expose your metal. Now that I've got it ground, I'm gonna tap a tiny bit through here. I think we're good there. So a little bit more sanding and we'll move on to the other side. So I like to get all of my sanding and prep work done. So all my mud work goes at the same time. Wow. There's a small chunk of the whole bedside. <laughs> Where the spot, the spot work? Main spot's right there. Go ahead and got this side sanded. Um, Colton's gonna get it all protected, and then I'm gonna go get a little bit of what we call kitty hair. So I just need to put a little bit of fiberglass filler over top of where I welded. That's gonna give us a perfect moisture barrier, just for in case we just don't ever want this to fail. And then we'll sand that, and then we'll go to our mud, we'll sand that, and then we'll go to glaze. So it's coming along nice. Taping up a little bit there, so this protects it where he's working. All right, so I'm gonna mix this properly. So I'm using my scale. I know that I have, well, it was point, it was 5.0 grams. I don't know why it's moving. We got it zeroed out. So I'm gonna put point, okay, this scale is doing some funky stuff. I'm gonna re-zero it out. Okay, I'm gonna put 0.1 grams of hardener because this is 50 to one. Too much. We'll go ahead and take a little bit off. So this is the proper way to mix hardener with a scale. Okay, that's how much hardener that little ball needs. That's 50 to one. We're gonna take that and we're gonna mix it in. So I've got my little baby palette. Now this will be the perfect mixture and it will harden correctly and it won't do anything stupid because you have used the correct amount of hardener. So let's go get this spread. All I'm doing is putting a little layer over this. Oh, it's got this. Brace all. All right, this is a procedure called cutting it while it's green. It's still a little bit gummy, still a little bit soft. So what I'm doing is I'm cutting it open 
so that it can breathe and harden up. So I'm just using a piece of waste paper, cutting the top off of it, and this will harden up a lot faster now. Well, it will continue to harden is what I should say. So I'm just sanding a little bit more, still a little bit scummy, but I'm getting a little impatient. There we go. Now we're hardened up. So I'm gonna sand a little bit more on the inside and then I'm gonna grab me a block and we're gonna get this thing blocked out. All right, so I've waited my entire life for this. You guys remember my pocket block? <laughs> That's my pocket knife, okay? This is what I'm gonna use to block this. So wrap around my paper, get this all blocked down. So all I wanna leave is just a little baby amount. So again, we don't want any of our plastic filler or fiber reinforced filler on top of paint. So you see, we've got that layer, it's peeled back. Next step is gonna be body filler. So now that we've got that sanded, we'll go mix some of that. And we're gonna show Colton how to do that and get the body filler spread on both sides. Let that harden up and then keep going. All right, we're gonna leave that. It's kind of a really weird shape, so it doesn't look great, but we'll go get this side filled up. So we went ahead and just went and mixed this up in the other shop. Now we're gonna try to get it all spread. This is a really weird compound curve. So it's not gonna be a super pretty spread. It'll work. All right, I'll go ahead and go get this cleaned up. I mixed way too much, but it looks really terrible. But it'll look a lot better once we sand it. All right, so this is hardened up pretty good. I went ahead and cut it while it was green. Now I'm seeing that my metal is just a little bit high. So I'll finish cutting this down and then I'll go back and do a little bit of tapping. And that will be pretty close to being good. We'll put some glaze over top of it. One thing that you gotta know is I'm using an acrylic block and these things get body work super, super flat. Even if you see a little bit of metal, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's a high spot or the you know, there's a low spot. But here I know because I pulled it, we'll do a little bit of tapping before we glaze it. So I cut that first. Now this is gonna roll out to here. I'm gonna grab a flat, a much flatter, harder block. So I'm gonna go up one size. So this, you can see my flexibility, it's just a little bit. This is 16th and this is eighth inch. I love these acrylic blocks. They are awesome. You could even say you're lucky for using them. So I'm peeling that filler back. You can see I'm off the paint just about. That's exactly what we're going for. Actually didn't really need much. You can see that my fiberglass filler is right there too. So now I'm gonna round this off because I know that edge is good. So I'm gonna work that over. It's gonna give me my contour right here. Now, it's not bad. So I'm gonna do this flat spot here. We'll come back to that here in a minute and then the inside I'll sand by hand. So you've just gotta, you gotta work body filler in sections and you gotta use the correct block or you'll create yourself unnecessary issues. So again, this doesn't need a lot. So I'm gonna cut off all this filler because I know it doesn't need it. I just kind of spread it a little bit thick. That will actually chip off. That's over top unsanded clear coat. We'll finish this out up here. Changing directions as I'm sanding, making sure I'm keeping it flat. That feels really nice. I don't want to take the 80 grit over and clean that up. I'll use a finer grit sandpaper there. You can feel just a little bit of metal there. We'll contour that by hand. And then let me grab a block to do this. Actually, we'll use my little block. Go back to that. Okay, now I'm gonna switch to just doing it by hand. Doing it by the old fillers. It doesn't have a super defined line that kind of rolls, but it, I don't know how to describe it. It has a line, but it's a rolly line. So that's what we're trying to put back into it. Feels really good. All right, I'll finish sanding this inside. We'll show you what it looks like here in a minute, and then we'll go to the other side. All right, so now that I've got this all 80 grit with the block, I've got my 180 grit on a DA. So 
The reason for this is if I put filler over top of these scratches, it's going to entomb them. You're never gonna get them out because you're gonna have glaze over top of them. So I take and I DA it like this. Now look, there's no sand scratches. What that's gonna do is that's gonna eliminate the chance of this shrinking and sand scratches showing up. Because if you don't have scratches, primer can't fill them in temporarily. They don't shrink, you don't have a comeback. That's what we're after. I got rid of that body filler on the scratch delete. All right, so now that is exactly how I like it for glaze. So I've tapped my metal. I've gotten rid of all my sand scratches. Now I can come back in and I can glaze this and I can feel confident that this is going to be good. I just want to hand sand just a little. All right, now we'll go over and we'll finish up the other side and do the exact same thing. All right, so this one was even even less filler. I'm gonna sand it by hand a little bit, get a little bit of the center out. So, but otherwise this is ready for glaze. That is noise, it's super, super noise. Okay, well, got it. Are you understanding the class? You're doing a very good job. Do you oh, feel confident in your skill set? I'm getting there. Pretty soon you guys are gonna watch I'm Colton taking do it that. in. And so look at that. Mr. Six Year Veteran is over there in the bed. Six years? Six years. That's how long you've worked for me. Longer. Oh, sorry. How many? Almost eight. Sorry. Mr. Eight Year Veteran over there. <laughs> You're not helping your case. <laughs> <laughs> the hillbilly has worked for me for eight years. I stand corrected. Well, how, so. What did I start out doing? He's over here building derby cars. Never touched a body panel until the new shop. Well, so four years. But he is getting his bedside off and we're just gonna keep working. I mean, this is, it's coming along good, real quick. See, the big holdup in a body shop is, well, sometimes it's us, but it's usually parts or insurance companies or something stupid, or we can blame it on whatever. I don't know what to blame it on. Others, other than this one really was all snake. So you wanna make sure to mix as much air into this as possible. So you get lots and lots of pinholes. And you may notice that I've switched to a spot to a spatula no to a plastic spreader now that is because i cannot contour with a metal spreader so i'm going to get this all spread out and we will show you what it looks like here in just a minute class is in session okay now we've got a 180 and we're final sanding for the final time until we sand again so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna block this all out, 180, get it ready. And I'm, I mean, you'll see that I kind of changed direction. We see how flat that's getting, it's what we want. You wanna use your block, keep it flat. You wanna use your sandpaper to cut. You do not need to push. People with big muscles tend to push and undercut stuff. So it's a good thing that I'm weak and I don't have big muscles. Again, we're gonna leave that stuff with catch that with a lighter grit and then you want to use your panel and run your blocks off of your mud to get it flat and then i i want to try to keep it over the paint as much as possible because it'll keep that line entombed i'll go ahead and get this all sanded i don't want to bore you guys too much we'll show you a little bit of it but i'll stop talking and just keep working My body, my legs are cramping up. It's almost finished. Almost. All right, so I've got this all sanded and this is feeling awesome. I've got the inside all shaved out. Got this all sanded. Feels really, really, really good. I've got some pinholes right here. So what we'll do is once we get the other side sanded, I'll use an air blower, we'll blow it off. We'll 320 everything and we'll fill our pinholes with a razor blade but we are getting super close to having this ready for primer. Our goal is almost achieved, but just not quite. Hillbilly's working on getting that off. I think he's pretty close to having that bedside off, but it may not be in this episode. You never know. 
right, so now I'm gonna go and I'm gonna take out all my 180 scratches with some 320 on a DA. <laughs> that is good, good. <laughs> <laughs> Now that I've got all this 320 done, I'm going back and I'm 600ing my edges. That way, I'm gonna encapsulate all the 320 scratches with primer. It'll be on a, it'll be on a 600 grit scratch. So that's a lot. Now, take scotch right. It's that easy. I'm gonna hit my edges because I do not want to prime over anything that's shiny. I want a tooth on every single thing that I'm gonna prime. Now that I've got it all sanded, quick little air blow reveals some big pinholes that I do not believe I wanna fill with primer. So we're gonna go mix up a little bit of glaze. We'll glaze these with a razor blade. Fill in those pinholes, wait a little bit, sand it. And I like to pre-clean all of my primer areas. So we'll get some wax and grease, we'll pre-clean it, then we'll mask it up, and then we'll shoot some etch and primer. So we're just about there. Hillbilly's kicking butt like this. He's about to rip this whole side off. So hopefully he has this bedside removed by the time we get this prime. So I got all the spot off the ground. I'm just going through them with the scene buster and busting them. But it should be falling off here shortly. But just like I said, we're just gonna razor blade the glaze into the pinholes. So the razor blade helps you control it to where you're not overspreading and it's just pushing it right down into the pinholes. There's a couple small ones that primer will get. There's people that say that they get pinholes and there's people that lie about it. Which one are you? Okay, I'm gonna call that good. We'll go get this cleaned up. We'll come back, let that harden up, sand it, repeat the process. See, the thing about auto body work is it's very, 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 very repetitive. All right, while the other stuff is drying, I'm just going to get this wax and greased. Try to get ahead of the ball. Now, primer is a little bit more forgiving because if you screw it up, you have to sand it anyways. Okay, that'll dry up. We'll get it masked. So we've got it all masked up. I just put my first coat of etch on both sides. We're gonna let this sit for about five minutes, come back in, get a second coat, then let's go mix some primer. Look at that. We finally achieved something that we said we're gonna do in an entire video. Aren't you proud of us? Oh, I'm just kidding. That was a joke, ha ha ha. But we do appreciate you guys watching us. Hopefully this was a little bit informative. We're gonna go over the repair hours before the video's over. So I wanna talk to you guys about what this is and how many actual hours it took us. Okay, I got all the spot welds ground, which is this seam here, along the front. No way. And then this. Let's see it. Careful. Hey, flathead. Destruction. Woo! That's nice. That's nice. That's real. Hey, I lost this. Ha! Ah, it was entombed. What is that? So this is the inner bolt. For that thingy right there, see that oh. plate? This fell when I r and the tonneau cover. It fell down inside and it was just sitting there. So, see, you needed to pull the side off to get that for me. All right, we're using ECP35. This is a PPG primer. It's a high build polyurethane primer, not polyester. Polyester is different. This is a 2.1 VLC high production turfacer. Really good stuff. Whoa, went a little bit over. <laughs> I'm gonna pour some back because I was talking to you guys, not paying attention. You gotta pay his attentions. Pay his attentions, okay? He's, I can only pour this back because there's no hardener in it yet. Obviously, there's hardener, there's no going back. All right, we'll get this stirred up, get it in the gun. Let's go prime this. It's been a good day. All right, we've waited 15 minutes. We got it all mixed up. Let me get this primer. So on our first coat, we want to keep it away from the edges and just let it do its thing. All right, so this is just a really small area. 
But like I said, we're keeping it off of our edges. So this is the first coat. We'll let this flash off, come back. We'll do two more coats, and then we'll show you guys what it looks like when it's done. But this body work turned out really well for Colton's first lesson. So stoked. All right, now that we've got this all primed, hit it with that guide coat. Got that one, two step. And that's ready to sit overnight. Let's get the other side done. So we literally just took you step by step, 100% through the process of repairing dents. Auto Body 101. All right, so I wanted to go through this and just show you guys, well, talk about what kind of hours this type of a job pays versus how many hours it took. So we've got on the right side, which is that, we've got four hours repair. And on this side, we've got seven. So that, for those of you that can do math, that's 11 hours. What time is it? 7 p.m. About 3.30 is when we started. So we're about three and a half hours. So in an auto body shop, you're paid on commission. That would have been a good day's amount of work in three and a half hours. We would have been paid for 11 hours. So not too bad, could do better. That's fine, we were teaching today. So at least we got to our stopping point. We made our goal. Good job. Good job, Colton. All right, so we got a lot done. Thankfully, we got it all on primer and we were able to teach you guys how to fix a dent. So I hope you guys get out in the garage and I hope you work on your own vehicles. So as always, we appreciate you. If you enjoyed this video, go check out this one.